I wanna fly high so I can- Ahem, ahem. Okay, here we are back in Driftvale City, and the first thing we're gonna do here is heal, and the second thing we're gonna do here is buy some more Moo Moo Milks, which is related to healing. Uh, again, I wasn't exaggerating when I said we're going to do most of our shopping in Driftvale City from now on, because, yeah, it's definitely the best and most effective at this point. Now let's see if I'm running low on Dust Balls. Am I? Dust Balls, how many have I got? Oh, wow, I certainly am running low on Dust Balls. I need quite a few more. Uh, 30 or 40? Uh, hmm. Oh, you know what, what the heck, I'm going to take 40. Just so I don't have to do another shopping trip for quite some time. And let's head on over to the market to restock our Moo Moo Milks. Can never find where that back entrance is. In fact, we can do something else at this market. Now that we've finally got a Pokemon above level 30, we can show it to that man in black over there. So let's buy several dozen Moo Moo Milks. Yeah, I'm going to need quite a lot of these, especially seeing as we're going to head through another fairly long cave soon. After a fairly long backtracking session. So, moo moo milk, moo moo milk, lots and lots of moo moo milk. And... Yeah, no reason not to spend pretty much all my money. There's not many TMs I particularly want to spend it on at this point. So, let's go and see this guy. So, I have a Pokemon level 30 or more, so he's going to give us the Expert Belt. Finally, we have another great held item. Uh, I think he's going to explain this to us. Yeah, basically what the Expert Belt does is give moves a 20% power boost when they're super effective. The Expert Belt is a really useful item because it doesn't have any drawbacks associated with it, uh, unlike things like Choice Items or Life Orb or things like that. In fact, the Expert Belt is a really good way to bluff having a Choice Item and then fake out your opponent with a different move when they least expect it. It's also pretty cool in general because, yeah, boosting the power of moves when they're super effective, then again, you want to use you want to use this on something with good coverage. Something like Lucario, Electros, something with really good coverage, basically. That's going to be hitting super effective most of the time. And we're starting to try out Surf. So we hear the surfing theme for the first time, which, not the best one in the series, but not that. Um, it's, uh, I didn't really like the Diamond and Pearl one, so this one's at least better than that one. And of course, uh, speaking of things I didn't like about Diamond and Pearl surfing, you surf a lot faster in this one compared to there. And you can't go under that bridge so don't try. But there's a lighthouse over in the middle of nowhere, so we could check that out. After looking through the water a little bit for some new Pokemon. Now, don't think you've seen- well actually, you've seen some trainers using Frillish, but we haven't had a chance to actually catch them until now. Frillish is... interesting. You'd think it's this generation's analogue of Tentacool, but it's actually quite unique. It's a water and ghost type, and uh, let's just see what this item is. A water stone, speaking of water. This will come in handy to evolve... Nothing we're really going to use on this challenge, so yeah. And I really thought there'd be another hidden item, but no. At least you get to see the really cool lighthouse animation. So anyway, Frillish. Frillish is a water and ghost type. And, actually, we're leaving right now, so, haha, <laughs> yeah, and we're going to be taking quite a big uh, detour back, because next on our, uh, next stop on our list is all the way back at Straight City. We're heading right back where things began, all the way back to our hometown, so it will be good to pay Mum a visit. I guess I'll talk about Frillish and Jealousette a bit later. So, we're all the way back here in Straight City. Why here, you may ask? Well, there's actually a lot of water around here, and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And we can surf over here to find some interesting stuff. For example, that NPC who's been taunting us all game. We had nowhere to actually reach him before, but now that we have surf, we can get over here, speak to this guy. For... Free Big Pearl. Once again, don't sell this yet. You'll get a better price for this later. So, yeah, good for you then. But, as you can see there, there's a hidden item here. And now this one... 
I actually forget whether you actually... I don't think you actually do need Surf for this one. No, you don't. I thought you did need Surf, but anyway. If you examine this area, you find a Balm Mushroom. Speaking of items that fetch a good price, this fetches a very, very nice price. Of course, there's only one place you can sell these to. High price is a massive understatement. They sell for a good 25,000 each. There are, there are only a few in the game, but they're not completely limited. You can get an infinite number of them from Wild Fungus and Amungus. They have a very, very low rate though, something like 1%. But still, again, you get a few during the main story, but rest assured they are infinitely obtainable, so you don't need to worry too much about hoarding them. Over here, there's a free Zinc, this one you do need Surf to get. Oh, and as for who you sell them to, you sell them to the Gourmet Maniac over in the caravan on Route 5. So, yeah. Now, if we go over here, we can find some more interesting goodies that require Surf. Now, I did not battle that guy before, so I want to dodge him. <laughs> it's like dodging breeders all over again. I don't think I battled you either, so I'm going to need to carefully sneak past. And now we Surf. There's nothing for Surf down here, but if you Surf up here, you can access a part of the route that you wouldn't be able to normally. You will also find some wild Pokémon. Here, you find pretty much nothing but Basculin. It's almost the magic harp of this game with how common it is in water areas. It's also great for speed EV training against. They give two points each, and are generally the only things that show up on the routes where they do, so again, very, very good for speed effort training. <coughs> we don't really need one of these since we already have our red eye. Now, if you see a a uh, dark patch of water, like that one, which I just failed to get because I ran into another wild Pokemon. <laughs> to think I didn't even plan that. Wow. Um, like that one. If you see something like that, it's the water's equivalent of rustling grass. Now, interestingly enough, dark water patches have two encounter lists. One if you surf into them, and another if you fish on them. Now, I expect some kind of hidden row to be here if this was black and white too, but it's not. Now, we won't be able to fish until much later, so for now, just surfing. But the interesting thing about that is that... Basculin comes in two forms. One colour is more common in black and the other is more common in white. But the other colour can be found in dark water. They're not actually purely cosmetic, the two of them do have different abilities. Well, they're supposed to have different abilities. They've got different abilities in the sequels, they fix that. Oh, great, another rare candy, that is really useful. Some of the best items ever in this challenge, but I'm going to save most of them until the very end. And another free vitamin, and there's a Pokemon breeder to battle here if we want to. Also, don't think just because this grass is harder to access that there'll be higher level wild Pokemon in it. It's not, really. You just find the same stuff you did normally on the route, so, so much for that. There is, however, another route where that is not the case, and we're just going to dodge that guy because really no real reason to battle him, man. Wild Pokemon encounter right on top of that item. Really? Sorry, we don't need any more pit ups. No more pit ups. Go away, pit ups. And so we can grab this thing here and. What is it with these things and. Ugh, being in out of the way locations? Anyway, you can finally buy those in Join Avenue in the sequels, which really surprised me, but basically, let's just surf all the way back. And there's actually one more area we had to sneak by these people, so let's do that again. There's actually one more thing close to this route that we can actually access with Surf, a whole new area. You didn't think Wellspring Cave was as small as it was then, did you? By definition, a wellspring needs to have water. Obviously, there's a lot of water in here, and obviously we're going to use a repel because... Yeah, don't want to run into a whole lot of annoying Pokemon in the cave. Don't want a repeat of the Charge Stone Cave annoyance incident. So, let's use a repel and get going. This cave is normally... Oh, hey, there's a hidden item I actually missed. Oh, right, it's... Oh, no, it's there. I thought it was uh, requiring Surf, but no, a full heal. That's actually kind of nice. We don't miss that. Oh, and yes, there is one down here, which I'm going to need to Surf to get to. Yeah, so we can come back here with Surf to find some interesting things. Here we get a PP up. That's a quite useful item. Better for competitive play than for actual in-game though, so probably not going to be using that that much. But anyway, 
Let's just surf over the water here, and we can find an item. And yet another one of these rare PP Restore items that I don't really like to use very much. And another item. Escape rope. Haha, <laughs> how convenient. So we can get out of here once we've found everything we need. And... Yep, this cave actually does have a second level. Although annoyingly, it's dark. Now, is this the first time we've had to use Flash? I get the feeling that it is. So, yeah, basically, to the utter rejoicing of most Pokemon fans, every Flash area in this game is completely optional. So that's good, and hey, I can <laughs> I can teach Mini Turret Flash. Technically speaking, I probably should teach it to uh, Bernadette, uh, just to give her, you know, at least some more use, but still. Probably not going to need Psych Up. So, here we go, we can actually use Flash. Go, Mini Turret! Survey this area with your target-sensing laser beam thingy eyes. And sadly, unlike in some generations, Flash does not fully light up the cave, it just lights up a small area around you. But seriously, good luck navigating this area without Flash. There's a whole lot of hidden items and regular non-hidden items down here, so it's a great place to visit. Now the main reason I'm going here is because I'm pretty sure there is an, at least one TM to find down here. But I at least wanted to show it off. So you can access this place right after you get Surf. Oh great. Yeah, I'm so used to the Black and White 2 want to use another repel message. So useful, one of the best additions to the series, really. In terms of sheer anti-annoy- Oh, and hey, uh, here's the TM I was talking about, Low Sweep. We saw that on Sork before. It does damage and lowers the target's speed. Quite useful. Although not quite as useful as Icy Wind. But hey, at least it's a fairly decent move. Oh, there's more hidden items up here there, but yeah, this place is kind of complicated. Yeah, if only Flash lit up the entire cave, but no, sadly it doesn't. Now, a warning, there actually are a couple of trainers in here, and because you can only get here with Surf... Ah, oh, uh, that trick's not fooling me anymore. Because you can only get here with Surf, which you can only get after the 6th gym, these trainers are appropriately leveled. And here is the second TM, and a very, very useful one. Well, actually, uh, one that's widely... It's kind of a can't-live-with-it, can't-live-without-it kind of TM of the competitive meta game, Focus Blast. Incredibly powerful fighting-type move, special. One of the... Ver a very, very good move for a lot of special Pokémon, particularly psychic types like Alakazam. Unfortunately, it tends to have a tendency to miss all the time when you need it to hit the most. It only has 70% accuracy, which in Pokémon World might as well translate to 40%. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's not a... It's, let's just say it's not the most reliable of moves, by a long shot. But the thing is, most Pokémon that use it really need to use it for coverage. Things like Gengar and Alakazam, they don't really have many other special fighting options. And with Aura Sphere having such limited distribution, it's really your best option most of the time. A lot of people say Focus Blast would have been a terrible move if it weren't for the fact that so many things actually need it for coverage. But anyway, it might help in this challenge. Okay, see these see these fighters and black belts training? Yeah. You want to avoid these people if you can help it. Or at least avoid a certain one of them. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get the hell out of here with an escape rope right now. Why? Well, you're about to find out. Welcome back, one and all! Didn't think you'd be seeing me again so soon, did you? That's right! It's time for another special episode of the thing you're always waiting for! In fact, this episode is so special that in fact the player forgot about this for quite some time. Until re-watching the footage, they were reminded of the horror that happened here. So basically, the player was previously talking about how they wanted to avoid these trainers at all costs. There is a very good reason for that, which you'll be seeing right here, right now. On...
So let's watch what happens on an earlier take, when the player did try and challenge these people, thinking they'd be no trouble at all! He prepares his team for battle, little does he know that it will be of no use. His subconscious attempts to fly to get out of this situation, but it is of no use once more. He is trapped. And this trainer certainly is about to be taught a very, very, very painful lesson. At the hands of Battle Girl Maggie and... Well, the first Pokemon she sends out is a Girder. The player thinks, oh, this is fine, I'll just use my flying type. This should be easy, he thinks to himself. Of course, Girder has a natural defense against its main weakness in the form of naturally learning Rock Slide, which is sometimes backed by the sheer force ability making it even stronger. And so, his flying type falls. But hey, a ghost type might work, right? Of course, the player was being a complete and total derp and did not realize that this thing was faster and would one-shot with Rock Slide. He was probably going for the Will-O-Wisp burn, but this thing might have had guts and that could have made things even worse. So, with flying and ghost down, the player decides to rely on sleep. Or completely derps and uses something stupid like Super Fang. I believe this was a misclick. The player clearly didn't intend for that to happen. Clearly they intended to put this thing to sleep. Of course, the player once again derps and tries to put this thing to sleep when a Hyper Fang would have easily knocked it out. Or maybe they were worried about that bulk up. Well, actually, they were right to be worried about that bulk up because they would have survived. Normal type against fighting is always risky, but here it paid off. Will it pay off next time? Once again, the Blue Beast enters the ring. The player's nightmare. They are already defeated twice by these menaces. Will the streak continue? Or will they be able to pr pull off an impressive turnaround? The player sends out Red Eye, hoping to deal some serious damage, despite a 10 level disadvantage here. Getting some slight damage in with Aqua Jet, just for a small amount of damage. Unfortunately, this will most certainly want to KO this poor fish. Only two left. Brohoof has saved the player from many scrapes in the past. Can he do this now? Striking with Spark. Hopefully the paralysis will ensure that he gets to strike first later on. Oh no, the beast becomes even stronger. With Bulk Up, boosting its attack and defense to even more monstrous levels. The player almost resigns themselves to defeat at this point, but they will not give up. Unfortunately, luck does not smile upon them and they do not get the crucial paralysis. This could end very, very, very badly. And luck continues to desert them, proving that all hope is lost. A 95% accuracy move misses, and Wilhelm has saved the player for a total party wipe once. Will they save them again? Will they do this? Will they pull it off? Only a small amount of damage is needed. Karate Chop strikes. And it wasn't even a critical hit, but it was enough. Once again... Sock. Win. Congratulations, Sork! You've just surpassed Clay as this player's nightmare opponent. We now return to your regular scheduled programming. So, yeah, I'm not too fond of Sorks at the moment. Moving on! I kinda wanna get as far away from here as possible, don't you? Now, here was something, I was trying to see if I could trigger a glitch here. I, turned out I didn't. Basically, there's a glitch where if you go to the lower floor of a cave when the music is still playing at a lower pitch, and then do a certain series of steps to get to another cave with the same music, then the pitch will still be lower. I don't think this worked here. Apparently, I was really, really close to actually activating this glitch. You have to be cycling or surfing at the time you use the escape rope. Then you've apparently got to go to 
Pinwheel Forest, more of Ishiris, or the Desert Resort, and apparently the music will play as a lower, at a lower pitch, so... You know what, I might actually investigate that myself and see if I can get that get a video of that glitch to activate, and I might tack on that video later. But for the time being, home sweet home! We're back home once again! Except not really, because I misclicked and flew the wrong place. Sorry, trust me, we will be going back home soon, but not just yet. One more thing we have to take care of first. Hey, we finally get to hear the uh, awesome music of this town again. And I am so irritated that the person in Black and White 2 will refuse to play the piano unless you show them a certain Pokemon or something. Ah! Damn it, I jumped. I came to this city just to hear that piano. And they didn't let me hear it. Okay, now for this I'm gonna need someone with strength. Remember that boulder we saw way back earlier in the playthrough? This thing. This thing might intrigue you. Yes, this is, in fact, a Strength Rock. Yes, yeah, Strength Rocks are huge in this game. Of course, we're not able to move it now. The only thing that's behind is an item, really. Well, we're gonna have something to deal with that now. So, let's find out just what's behind the rock. I... <laughs> oh, I love it when repels wear off at the weirdest times. I get the feeling it's going to be something kind of underwhelming, but let's use Strength. The good news is, once you've moved to Strength Boulder, it never comes back. It's stuck there forever. So, let's see what we got here. Rare Candy! Wow, that is totally not underwhelming. That is great, totally worth it. We got two Rare Candies this trip. That is awesome, really, really awesome. This backtracking was worth it. Speaking of backtracking, the bicycle makes backtracking so much easier because you go a lot faster. Anyway, let's head on once again through the awesome music town, and we're going to need to put Tiki back. Sorry, Tiki, you're not quite at the right level to put up much of a fight at this point. Plus, I need Red Eye back for... well, we're going to need to surf again quite soon. Ha, ah, kind of reminds me of those days back in Gen 1 when you had to go all the way back to Pallet Town to, so you can surf to a new area. Of course, in this case, the new area with, for surfing is entirely optional. Oh, I almost went through this area without a wild encounter. Hi, Little Pup, what level are you? Hey, 4, the highest level. Well, at least that's a sign. Now, go away, please. Now we're back home! So, why did I make a quick stop over back home? Well, several reasons. Well, for one, I kind of want to go, go and say hi to mum again. It's only, you know, nice to do that. But there's a more practical reason. Aside from her healing you like this. Huh, that's interesting. The player character actually has a father. Huh. In a lot of other games, the player's father's never mentioned. I wonder who that father was. You know, this might give me interesting potential for a possible sequel No Experience playthrough. And also, uh, this is the more practical reason for coming back here. One, Cedric Juniper is now staying with his daughter. But secondly, if you go back and say hi to Professor Juniper, and show her how your Pokedex has been coming along, you get some gifts out of it. So, if you've seen 80 Pokemon in the Unova region, you'll get, after this little jingle... So yeah, always battle trainers to see more Pokemon in your decks. So, after seeing 80, you get a TM for False Swipe. This, again, a very, very, very handy move for catching Pokemon. So, yeah, if you don't revisit your home, you won't know this TM exists, so yeah. And we've got another TM, Protect. Another very, very, very useful TM. More so for doubles than for singles, but anyway, you're gonna need this. Now, there is one more TM that... Ah, oh, faint. Uh, it's been a lot better. It's a lot better this generation than it used to be. Let's just say that. Now, there is one more TM she'll give you if you've seen over a hundred, but we won't be getting that for a little while. I believe that one is Hit Power. So yeah, let's just go check up on Bianca's folks for a second and notice that, hey, the developers have remembered to give them different dialogue. That's nice. 
And let's check to see if Cheren's parents see anything. Say anything, I mean. I believe you are not saying anything new. Nor you, it looks like. But at least Bianca's father's come around. So, that's pretty much all we have to do over at November Town. So, let's go and head on over to this one place that if you didn't look at your town map, you probably wouldn't know existed. This is a totally optional series of routes, and while it's not required, there is at least one Pokemon you can find here that's very useful. There are also quite a few useful TMs and items, and hey, it's a new area, it's pretty cool, and... Well, it looks pretty cool too, so I can at least go ahead and show you that. So we're going to stop over there, and after that we'll continue with the main plot. So, to access this new area, simply surf at the water right here. Amazing, Route 1 of all places having a totally hidden portion of it. So if we keep surfing, we'll eventually land here. Be warned, the trainers here are much, much better than before. So yeah, they're definitely not Route 1 trainers, believe me. We're going to avoid as many as we can. There's also Dark Grass here. This does have new Pokemon that aren't on the route before, and they're at a much, much higher level. Huh, wonder if that guy's going to battle you or not. As you'll see here, case in point, Watchhog! That certainly wasn't available on the first route, and it's at quite a decent level too. There's nothing really much here that I haven't really seen before, so I'm not going to really catch anything. But just as a proof of concept, the wild Pokemon here are different to the ones on the normal part of the route, mainly because this is Dark Grass, so they can code in a separate encounter list for it. There's an item down there, but do I want to battle that Ranger for it? I'm not sure I do. And more Pokemon. Oh hey, Scraggy, they weren't on this route before. They're at quite a decently high level too. So, yeah, it's new stuff which I'm probably not going to catch, so not really all that much to see or say here. And I'm going to end this part soon and pick off next time when we actually will be exploring somewhere totally new that we haven't seen before. Well, actually, we haven't seen this place before either, but it's mostly just a bunch of grass and hills. And hey, a gate! Interesting. And there is nothing of interest beyond here. Move along, nothing to see here. You know I find this really ominous rather than refreshing? Look, it's like we're going into freaking no man's land or something. There is nothingness beyond here. And you are totally not Zink LeBlanc. Anyway, I will see you next time.